So let's follow up on Andrew Scheer's first uh, major foreign policy speech with three members of Parliament. Rob Oliphant is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. James Bazan is the National Defence Critic for the Official Opposition Conservatives. And Matthew Dubay is the Critic for Public Safety and the Caucus Chair for the NDP. Gentlemen, good to see you all. Thanks Mr. Oliphant, let me start with you. Let's begin with Andrew Scheer's promise to move the Canadian Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That would be a major change to Canada's long-standing position, uh, that the status of Jerusalem must be determined as part of a wider peace deal. What's your reaction to what he's proposing? I mean, Canada's had a long-standing relationship supporting the sovereign state of Israel, uh, making sure that it has peace and security uh, as, as its hallmark, and also trying to, to find long-term constructive uh, ways to, to establish two states in the, re in the region. And I think that what, what we want uh, to do is always have a thoughtful, um, uh, Im important discussion about any policy issue that's going ahead. And at this time, that's not something that we think would be helpful okay. um, in, in this situation to, to establish uh, security for Israel and peace in the region. All right, Mr. Bazan, a former Conservative Prime Minister Joe Clark promised to move the Canadian Embassy to Jerusalem. That was in uh, 1979, and then he abandoned that idea when he became convinced uh, the move would hurt peace efforts. Why is this back on the table with Andrew Scheer? Well, I think uh, Andrew Scheer has clearly articulated why we need to be uh, moving our embassy and recognizing that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Uh, the Knesset, the uh, government of Israel, recognizes that as their capital. The United States, Russia, among other nations, have all now said that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. So I don't understand why we would not want to put our own officials and our own embassy in Jerusalem and support the peace process from the center of Israel. Now, there, there's no question that what Andrew did today was clearly articulate a strong foreign policy as well as how we would um, uh, make changes to the Canadian Armed Forces to make sure Canada reestablishes itself with the respect of our, our allies and our partners, and Israel is one of those key okay. partners that we want to have a strong relationship with. Mr. Dubé, what, what's your reaction? To, let's go back to that. What's your reaction to Mr. Scheer's proposal on Jerusalem? Well, my sense is that Canada should be playing a role uh, of trying to broker a peace, a two-state solution. I think that's the best thing for security in the region uh, and those who live there who are seeking it. And ultimately, I think following President Trump and, and taking a unilateral move like that, that risks being very inflammatory, is not necessarily helpful for that process. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, you know, and we're inclined to agree with the government on this, I think the role Canada should be playing is to be making those kinds of decisions in collaboration with everyone around the table as part of a larger process, which, as you mentioned off the top, has been Canada's long-standing position, and I think that that's the most helpful thing we can do. It's a difficult enough issue as it is without uh, these kind of unilateral moves, and so, uh, again, I think it's, it's pretty clear that uh, if we want security uh, and stability, I think there needs to be uh, okay. more consultation on this type of, of, of decision. It's just not something that we can uh, get behind. Mr. Oliphant, Andrew Scheer, uh, uh, a number of times today, uh, pointed out what he believed were the failings of, uh, of the Prime Minister on the international stage. Uh, Mr. Scheer promising to take a tougher stand on China, saying your government has too eagerly sought uh, a, a better economic relationship with China at the expense of human rights and fairer trade. He's calling for a total reset of the relationship, new terms, new approach. What do you think of that? Well, what we knew before uh, today's speech uh, were a couple things about what Andrew Scheer thought about the uh, uh, the world. We we knew that he wanted us to capitulate on NAFTA and uh, wanted well, us to take did. any deal uh, instead of working to get a good deal, which uh, Christian Freeland did get a great deal. Um, we also knew that he, he supported a chaotic uh, Brexit uh, uh, solution. And those were the only two things we really knew. We knew that he was... Uh, dangerously close to saying uh, withdrawing from a Paris uh, agreement on climate change, no plan on climate change, which is an international issue. So those are the kinds That's of the things question. we knew. Today we add to that um, some more obscurity and more division and more um, uh, re refusal to understand that the world has changed. Um, but, this but I'm is talking a, about his China policy. Though. This, he, he's well, saying this, we need, you need to get tougher in China. And he, I mean, he's not the only one saying that. This is a very complex situation. Uh, we have lives at stake in this. And, and I, I would say this is not the time to politicize this. This is the time for us to ensure that we have Canadians who are detained, who are safely returned. Uh, this is arbitrary detention. Canada is okay. working on this strongly with China. We're also working on it strongly with uh, multilaterally. The, the minister has taken every chance she has to to speak to the United States, to, to gather multilateral, many, many supporters All right, Mr. Bazan, what does Mr. Scheer mean when he calls for a total reset? 
Well, we, first and foremost, we have to engage at the top level. You know, Justin Trudeau hasn't even picked up the phone to call the president of China. He hasn't even called in the Chinese ambassador. Uh, it's been incredibly weak leadership under the Liberals. And so Andrew Scheer is saying that we ha have to strengthen uh, our resolve when dealing with the Chinese, because right now they're kicking the snot out of us. Uh, they, they've taken action against canola, against pork, and they've imprisoned uh, Canadians over there. And who knows what comes next? And all we get from the Liberals is backpedaling. They haven't engaged at all in trying to resolve this We've issue and uh, this. not at okay. all Constantly and and and, and when all you, you it's been that. months it's been four months and they haven't even picked up the phone that's right. how engaged they are Constantly. and they're, they're, they're talking to the white house and saying well maybe you guys can fight for us because we sure can't fight for ourselves and your sheer will carry that fight right to beijing mr dubey how should canada be responding to, to this ongoing trade and diplomatic dispute with china well certainly uh, i would one would hope that uh, the work that's going on behind the scenes is there the diplomatic work but at the same time i think ultimately uh, the prime minister's responsibility is to show leadership to canadians and towards china i don't think that that's been the case at the same time when it comes to mr shear's announcement today uh, the, when you look the other way what's what's the alternative when the conservatives were in power we uh, alienated many countries we took stepped away from multilateral yeah, initiatives right uh, and so well, that's exactly right. And so ultimately, uh, you know, it's a choice between weak leadership or stepping away from efforts that really uh, would, would help us uh, play a larger role uh, in the world, multilateral efforts. And so uh, I don't think either of those options are the right thing. I, I do agree with uh, Mr. Bazan that, that the Prime Minister does need to do more. Uh, at the same time, I think, uh, you know, fiery rhetoric and, uh, and a promise to return to a different kind of isolation that we saw under Stephen Harper is okay. not the solution either. Mr. Oliphant, uh, Mr. Scheer is also promising to assert Canada's sovereignty in the North. We've got some interesting, uh, we're at an interesting place in the relationship with the United States. We still have uh, steel tariffs and aluminum tariffs. Uh, we saw yesterday information uh, that puts us at odds with the Americans over the F-35 program. Um, the U.S. Secretary of State uh, resurrected the old dispute between Canada and the U.S. that had been dormant rejecting Canada's sovereignty over the Northwest Passage, calling it illegitimate. Is that an indication of a weakened relationship with the United States, or is it more bluster from the Trump administration? I think it's actually bluster from uh, Andrew Scheer. Um, the, the reality is we have two, and the Canadians are smart, and they're going to look at this situation and say, we have a government that is standing up for Canadians on every issue, whether it has a renewed NAFTA, whether it is with China, whether it is with the Arctic, and grandstanding. Standing up? or grandstanding. Grandstanding is empty political rhetoric. Uh, this time, let's talk about the Arctic for a minute. There is absolutely no doubt. Today, yesterday, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs has been at the Arctic Council. She has stood up for Canadian sovereignty. It is internationally recognized. The, the Northwest Passage, that whole Arctic passageway, but why, is why, in why are the Canadian Americans, waters. Why are the Americans throwing this out I, there again when we haven't heard it for years now? Uh, who knows? Uh, who can absolutely understand what that administration will do at any given time? All right, let me move All to we that. do is we stand up for what Canada uh, has values for. Canada will do these okay, things, got a couple of minutes including left. Arctic sovereignty. M Mr. Bazan, how should Canada respond to that claim from the U.S. Secretary of State? Well, I think direct engagement with the White House, and also we have to start doing our share to show that uh, we are a sovereign nation, that the Arctic is ours. So we, you know, use it or lose it. So uh, we have to re-engage with Americans under NORAD, and that's why we're going to do things like ballistic missile defense. That's why we're going to make sure that uh, we, we get the right aircraft uh, to, 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 to be patrolling those areas with uh, the Americans. And ultimately, we, we have to invest in our North Warning System, which again is part of the NORAD uh, construct. So uh, if, if we want to remove steel and aluminum tariffs, under security tariffs, then we need to actually invest in our security for continental uh, defense with the Americans. So NORAD's important, and Andrew clearly articulated that we're going to take the steps to show that we have control over the Arctic, and that the only reason the Americans are getting nervous is because the Chinese are sailing through there, the Russians are trying There's to sail no through there, and, and, and no at the evidence. end of the day, we have to actually be able to police our own waters, and right now the Americans don't think we can All do right, that. we'll give the last comment to you, Mr. Dubay, on this. Well, I think it's interesting because uh, certainly there's cause for concern uh, with the, what the Americans are saying. I think the one good thing about this uh, blowhard rhetoric is that it's brought this issue back to the fore in, the, in what Canadians are seeing and hearing in the news, which is a good thing because it's a very significant issue, uh, not just because of the Americans, but as was mentioned, because of the Russians and the Chinese as well. But ultimately, uh, the Americans are friends, but they're not family. And I think they have their own interests, they have their own agenda, uh, both in the region and when it comes to other uh, proposals that are being raised with regards 
guns to their own uh, ballistic missile defense programs and things such as that. And so certainly we don't want to step away from our neighbor and ally, but at the same time, we also have to recognize okay. that they are out there for themselves and we need to stand up for Canadian interests on these files. All right, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, it's been good to get all of your perspectives and we'll speak again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.